Hello, Planeswalkers! Tyler and Andrew here, bringing you another Commander Countdown Top 5. Or I guess, technically a Top 10, or... You know, sometimes even a Top 9 if we have the same picks. Anyway, having gone through every card type as well as every single color commander, we're continuing on with our list of two color commanders by looking at my absolute favorite two color combo, the Green-Black Golgari. But remember, these lists are our personal favorites, so feel free to leave your favorites down in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's get started. A common theme we're going to see among this particular color combination is dead things don't stay dead. That being said, each creature on my list handles that thread very differently, and the most unique among them is my number 5 pick, Skullbriar, the Walking Grave. At a base level, a 2-mana 1-1 one -one with haste might not seem that great, but he becomes much better when you take into account his second ability of gaining plus 1 plus 1 counters whenever he hurts other players. However, his true specialty comes from the fact that he keeps his counters if he goes to the command zone, the graveyard, or the exile zone, something I believe is entirely unique to him. This makes him not only a great place to dump plus one plus one counters, but if you look a little closer at the wording of his ability, you'll notice it just says counters generically, meaning Ikoria's suite of ability counters also remain. This plays really well into the flavor of things being buried in a grave but getting tangled in with Skullbriar when he returns. Now all he needs is a tragic backstory like a necromancer and an elementalist failing a ritual of eternal life and becoming forever entwined in horrific undeath. Huh. Well, moving on. So being up front, Golgari is one of the color combos I'm not super familiar with. That said, Slimefoot the Stowaway is one of my favorites because of the Saperlin deck that I used to run on Arena. It was my favorite deck to play when I first started playing Arena, back when Ixalan was still in standard. Saperlin Tribal is a fun build in general, and it won me a surprising amount of victories when I played it, so Slimefoot will always have a special place in my heart. Storev, Devkar and Lich, is my fourth favorite, partly because of how awesome her design is. Partly because she just recurs creatures and planeswalkers from your grave. Granted, in order to get her to connect, you'd likely have to run a Voltron build, which doesn't necessarily synergize well with a creature-heavy deck, so her recursion may not be so great, but I think I can make a fun deck out of her if I really tried. Now, this wouldn't be a proper Golgari commander list without a representative of the color combo's namesake. And at my number four spot are the Golgari Swarm's very own Sisters of Stone Death. I like snakes, so Gorgons in general are pretty sweet as a mythological creature in my opinion, and their ability to petrify prey has always been just a really cool way to kill. The sisters bring that flavor in their abilities, by being able to draw in foes, exile them, and then bring them back under their control. From a gameplay perspective, it's also just really fun to do. I love taking my opponent's things and using them against them in a stop hitting yourself situation. Why focus your deck around your own strategy when you can use other people's decks against them? It's great! He's here, he's feared, he's better than you in every way. Taking the number three spot on my list is the one, the only, the Get Good Toad! There isn't anything I don't like about the Get Rog Frog, from the creature type of frog horror, to the fact that the 6-6 six six has death touch for no discernible reason. I also like him because I've seen what he can do, and while I'm not nearly smart enough to pilot the monster myself, the amount of pure value he can generate is just... a hop above the rest. If I was better at running decks where the end goal wasn't club someone with the biggest stick I can find, he would absolutely be way higher on my list. Jevil, Bane of Monsters, brings up the middle of my list. See a creature or planeswalker that you know everyone at the table wants dead? Put a bounty counter on it and reap extra rewards when it's dealt with. Or, if you hold a commanding board presence and people really don't want you getting extra value, then you can play the political game and strike a deal with someone to put a bounty counter on one of their creatures, making people reluctant to deal with that creature, lest they give you extra value. As is hammered into the heads of everyone who knows me, I love going wide. 
which is why my number two is Izoni, Thousand Eyed. In a discard cycling deck build, I can load up my grave with creatures and play Izoni to make tons of tokens. Anthems to boost them and Panharmonicon to double Izoni's ETB makes for a big problem for my foes. As should be fairly common knowledge by now, I like tribal builds. And as such, commanders built specifically around a tribal theme are my absolute favorites. There were several candidates for this position, but for my number two slot, I chose the Sapling of Kolfenor. Tree folk have always been very interesting to me, and the fact that Sapling not only supports the tribe, but also plays with their gimmick of low power, high toughness to generate value, plants her squarely into my wheelhouse. Plus, with over 70 tree folk in the game, you have flexibility when it comes to how you want to build her. And you aren't pigeonholed into the same dozen or so creatures that tribes like bears offer. Build Sapling and fulfill Mr. Beast's dream of planting 20 million trees on your kitchen table and watch your opponents drown in a sea of untreated lumber. Taking the gold medal for the number one spot on my list is the newest entry. He was powerful and fun enough for me to completely dismantle my previous Golgari deck and build around him, he's hard to keep down, and he's full of unrestrained violence. It's none other than the big bad zombie Hydra himself, Pelucranos Unchained. I don't even know where to start with him. Maybe with the fact that you basically never are gonna have to pay commander tax for him? Or how about the fact that he comes back from the grave as a 6 mana 12-12 that can fight whatever gets in his path? Maybe it's his ability to not die to death touch. Whatever the reason, Pelucranos isn't here to play games the second time around, clearing the board time and time again by fighting things for only three mana a pop. Go ahead, give him a Hydra's growth and just go to town. At number one I have Umori the Collector. This adorable ooze strangely doesn't do any collecting, at least not mechanically. Umori instead has you choose a card type when it enters and makes cards of that chosen type, costs one less to cast. The main reason I like Omori is because of how versatile of a commander it is. You can build a deck around any card type, making for some completely different deck builds from a single commander. I eventually want a deck in every color combination, and Omori is in consideration for my Golgari deck. The only thing holding me back from building it is the fact that I just got done building a Vedrock deck, and I'd like to try and diversify which sets my commanders are from, from here on out at least. Still, if enough time passes without a new Golgari commander coming out that piques my interest, I'll come back and revisit Umori. Thanks for listening, Planeswalkers. Were there any commanders that we left out that you enjoy? Did you like our picks? Be sure to let us know down in the comment section below. And be sure to throw a sub our way, give us a like, shoot us a comment, and ring that little bell so that you never miss an upload. Later, y'all.